Yes, sir. Can someone confirm that the live streaming is happening? Sir, for the OPP exam, will there yeah. be any restrictions on like importing any functions or anything like that? Like, like, will it be required to code in a way like predefined way? Like, we have to do it in a certain way, or like we can just getting the result is the important. How it will be? Let's see. Uh, what happens is the some some of the some of the you know the libraries you are you are talking about importing libraries right so some libraries may not be working properly properly in our portal okay so what i would say is just just do the just do like normally okay and uh, yeah try not to use any libraries try not to import anything okay okay fine so let me just share my screen and we'll One second. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, one thing I want to say is, uh, in the OPP, you are going to get two easy questions, okay, and then and then. Two medium, two medium difficulty level, and then like one is one, one is going to be hard question. Okay, and among these five questions, you need to solve only four. Okay, so yeah, let's keep that in mind. And then, and then most of these mock problems, some of these mock problems are really hard. So you need not have to worry if you if you're not able to solve all the mock problems. Okay, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Here, the first problem what this is. Data operator has a faulty keyboard. The keys zero and one are very unreliable. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Okay, so in place of uh, the operator uses L. Okay, so this L uh, in place of one. Okay, and then and then he has used O in place of zero. Okay, so they are saying both both L and O are in the lower case. Okay, and then L is the first letter. Okay, just to just to you know. Tell you that uh, it is L and not I. They are saying L is the first letter of the word land. Okay, the small L, and not the capital I. Okay, they are just saying you that. Okay, okay. So now the question is: Accept a ten-digit ten-digit number as input and find the number of places where the numbers zero and one have been replaced by letters. If there are no such replacement. Print print the string. No mistakes. If, the, if there are if there are like no such replacement that is like if the number is like exactly exactly all right so then you should print no mistakes okay if not you should print the number of mistakes replacements okay you should print the you should print the number of mistakes and in the next line you should print the correct phone number okay so this what we should do we should accept a 10 digit number as input right yes sir Okay, so we are just for this. Here, as as they told, the ten-digit number it could have this it could have the uh, O as well as the L. So we cannot directly convert that to convert uh, convert that to you know the integer. Okay, All right. So I had taken this number n as input, and and I will loop through. Okay, so first uh, the they are asking for the counting the number of mistakes, right? So yes. I count the mistakes, okay. I'll count the mistakes. Initial mistakes I'll assume it to be zero, and then I'll print, you know, actual number. Actual number as an empty string I'll keep. Okay. So first, what I'll do is for the you know the number you know, or let's say like for digit, for digit in n. Which means you know we are looping through we are looping through each and every digit. Okay, so if uh, o is equal to o equal to that digit, correct? O equal to that digit, which means you know in place of in place of uh, o, it should have been zero. Okay, correct? Yes. Correct. Right so. I should be incrementing the mistakes because in place of zero it has been O. Okay, and then okay. So what I will do is 
we just replace it sir yeah we should be you should be replacing it so in the actual number in the actual number i will add zero okay it's clear what i just done here actual number the mistakes part you have understood here since since in place of four the zero should be there okay i'm having that as you know actual number as zero to to the, to the actual number i'm adding the string zero okay, okay. let's say what's the other case in place of one it could be l right mm -hmm. or let's let's call it the other way okay so let's say if the digit equal to zero we'll put o we'll put Is it is equal to L? Yeah, the is it equals to L? Then, then also it's a mistake. Okay, mm -hmm. so we should be incrementing the mistakes. I one, and then actual number. No. Actual number should be you know added. The one should be added to the actual number. Okay. In the else part. No, if it is not O or O or L. Then that means it's a correct number. Okay, the number is correct. So in that case, you won't be incrementing the mistakes. Okay, but but you you will be you you need to add that uh, digit to the actual number, right? Is this part clear? The line number twelve. Why why we have done that? Yes. See, yes. It's sir. like, huh? Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now once we are done, okay. So at the end, at the end, what's going to happen is the actual number is going to be a string, but but it has the it has a correct phone number because we have replaced the O's as well as the L's with the, with the corresponding zero and the ones, okay. And then and then let's say like if if it doesn't have a zero, uh, sorry, O or L, then then we have added the digit itself, okay. So at the end, at the end. We should check for the number of mistakes because, based on the number of mistakes, we need to print. If the number of mistakes is zero, okay, then what we should print? We should print no mistakes, right? The number of mistakes is zero. We should print no mistakes. So we'll just copy that. Okay, I should print no mistakes. Then. Uh, if not print the mistakes, number of mistakes we need to print. That is the replacements. Okay, that is in the else part. If the if there are mistakes, then we should print the mistakes. That is the number of mistakes. And then we should print the correct phone number, right? So we can do this actual number. We can print. So here, yeah. Even even though you have done this, yeah. Even though you are printing it as you know as a string. Okay, it doesn't matter. Or, or if you convert this to integer or print, even though I mean both the cases, the output is going to be same. So you could do it like this also. Int of int of actual number or you know the string itself, the output is going to be same. Also, oh, yeah, we can do this without using any for loop or any loop, just in few lines. Oh, can you repeat please? Which one? Uh, the whole. The whole code, sir. Yeah, yeah, the whole code. Yeah, like we can do like from the line line two itself. We can do if o in num n or l in num n, then we can add the list. So, so my I don't know why my portal is not opening, but I can paste my code. Just give me a second, sir. Yeah, what you are saying is, you know, we can we can check we can check whether whether O is there in N or you know the the L is there in N. That we can check, but we have to we have to replace the corresponding indices also, right? So that also we should do. Okay, even even for that, even for that, yes, sir, to... yes, sir, yes, sir. We can do that also. We can use like replace replace function. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so using the replace function, yeah, we can do. Okay. That can be done. Okay, yeah, using that also you can do. But then let's say like you do not know the replace, then you can use this normal way. Okay. Sir, why my, on my portal it is showing that you are giving an exam and you cannot use an other browser 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, the same, same issue for me, so. Correct, correct, correct. So, so that is happening because you know between this four to five, there is a smoke happening for you, right? Yes. So during that time, you will not be able to access the portal. I don't know even why I am accessing. Uh, so there is mock now. I should not be able to access it. So there is okay. mock happening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me test on this. So, sir, we would be able to access it after five. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is some mistake in my board. Okay, this one. Sir, in line sixteen, you write. Uh... Line sixteen. Uh, yes, sir. Count the mistakes. Count mistakes and the. Uh, just three mistakes so right there three mistakes so mistakes in okay, okay, f functions okay. So. okay 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 fine yeah we can use the f function or what we could do is we can just do this mistakes comma mm. mistakes we can do yes sir. Okay. yes and this way is also work. so now let me submit it directly Yeah, it works. Okay. So the OPP one, do you have any questions? Sir, I did it a little differently. I didn't create a new string. I just replaced the value. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can use the replace function. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. But before you do the replace, uh, you, you just have to you know count the number of rows and then count the number of ones. Then, then you can go with the replace. Yes. So actually, I did like if uh, means I iterated inside that. Whatever number we had, since it was a string, I can directly check like i yeah. equal to o and i e or i equal to equal to l. Then Correct. I incremented the count and then I using two replace functions, I just replaced the value. Yeah, yeah, if that's count okay. zero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I pasted my code. Okay, so four nine mistakes equals two. So yeah, that is okay. Yeah, yeah, even this is okay. It's the same thing. Okay, you're 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 using the replace function. I didn't use the replace function. Okay, so that's okay. So, is this session will be recorded? It is actually recording. It, it's it will be recorded. It it is the recording is actually going on. Okay. Uh, okay. So, if the first question is clear, then we'll move on to the second one. Purma Nagasai, you you are right to you are right hand. Yes, sir. I just wanted to know in the beginning that uh, what is the syllabus for OPP, sir? Is it uh, it's, it's four weeks or six weeks, sir? No, six weeks, six weeks. Six, six, six weeks. Six full weeks, no, sir? Yeah, six full weeks, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so then we'll move on to mock two. A sequence of integer of even length is called left heavy. The sum of the terms in left half of the sequence is greater than the sum of the terms in right half. This term right heavy, the sum of the sum of the second half is greater than the first half. It is said to be balanced if both sums are equal. Okay, so this let's check. So first thing we should be accepting a sequence of comma separated integers, right? So write the code here. Okay. The list of integers. Okay, so I'll have this list as what? That is split. split. Yeah, split based on comma. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then for 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 each for each number, right? We should be converting the number to to string, right? Okay. So let's do it this way. Call it like. Left heavy, left heavy, left count. Okay, left sum we'll put. We'll, we'll count the left sum as well as the right sum. Okay. Then, then based on the based on the values of left sum and right sum, then we can we can decide whether it's left heavy, right heavy, or balanced. Okay. So for i in range of n of l. Okay. So. If i equals to what? If uh, i is less than n of l divided by 2, 
okay so for suppose let's say let's say you have what you have you have the length as 4 right you have the length as 4 right so the the first two the i mean the first the left half will be what 0 1 and then and then the right half will be 2 3 right okay so if the, if the i is less than less than less than this len of len of l divided by 2 okay so then then it means uh, you know this particular element it belongs to the left side okay is that clear what i just done there yes no is that clear yes sir yes sir yeah and currently currently whatever elements i have that is there as a as you know it is there as a string so i have to convert it i before before me adding it to left sum i have to convert that to integer okay so that's what i have done else you know when when i doesn't fall in this this value that means it belongs to the right sum okay so right sum plus equal to same of of i okay so now we got the left sum okay this is going to loop through loop through all the elements okay so that is from i in range of 0 to n minus 1 so considering considering n as the n as the length of l okay so the first half elements okay we'll be adding it to left sum the last half we'll be adding it to right sum okay now now we can write, we can just uh, check the if, if block if the left sum equals to right sum no, then we can print what balance balance yeah so i think b is capital yeah yeah i just check that b is small here okay b is small then l is the left sum is greater than left sum is greater than the right sum then it's going to be what the print right left heavy left heavy Else, it's going to be print right heavy. Yeah, right heavy. I mean, if it's not balanced, uh, and then if it's not left heavy, then it's going to be right heavy. Okay. So since they have asked just to do that, that is whether to check to check whether there is no you know left heavy, right heavy, or balance. So we have done that. Let's just check now. Yeah, so the code was working. You know, here for this test cases, you could see the left the left sum will be equals to one, two, three, it's a six. The right sum is uh, four plus five, nine, nine plus six, fifteen. So obviously it's right heavy. Okay, and then and then our code also gave gave right heavy. In the second test case, it's one, 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 one. The left sum is one plus one, two, the right sum is two, so it's balanced. Okay. Is this clear? Sir, I have two questions. First question is here L is a list, right? It, uh, it's uh, yeah. it converts yeah. to list. And second is uh, means uh, if we have odd number of values, then how it will take like? They have mentioned that it's, it's of even length. You see the question, a sequence of integer of even length. OK. So I have to assume that it's an even length. Yeah, you have to assume you have to assume that you can just directly assume that it's even even it's an even length. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Those two questions here. But if it says like a uh, sequence of values are in uh, odd length, then I had to add one value, right? Uh, like uh, uh, length no. of uh, L uh, divided by two plus one, right? See there, there. What you have to do is for suppose let's say like there are like three three numbers. Okay. Hmm. Three numbers. Then you should you should you should omit the middle part. Okay, you should you should you should, you should not consider the middle number. You, should, you can just consider the the you know. Let's say like there are there are like nine. Okay, there are like nine integers. Okay, there are like nine integers. So you should you should just you should just consider the first four and then the last four. Hmm. Okay. So because because the middle part middle part it's at like exact center. Okay, so it doesn't affect. It doesn't go in you know, you know the left part as well as the right part. It doesn't go anywhere. That time I have to just. Uh, yeah, that okay. that time that time you have to you have to change your code a little bit. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 
correct so you just have to check you know not just this part you should check you should, you should check you should check you know whether whether that whether that value equals to uh, the the middle part or not okay whether that i equals to i is the middle index or not is that also you should check okay so if the second mock is clear then we'll move on to third mock is that okay yes hello sir i'm yes. on the side sir yeah, line yeah. number 5 can you explain once again line number 5 line number 5 one second this one yes how does it affecting okay so for example let's say you have a have the you have the you know ballista something like 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 right 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 so the left half is what the left half is what 1 comma 2 right right now so the indices is going to be indices are zero and one i mean i'm just talk, okay zero or one for left or correct but totally it's what zero one two three right right okay so zero and one should belong to the left and then and then the remaining will belong to the right 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 okay so and what is this line of l line of l is four correct right right correct line of l divided by two is what two it's two okay so any index that's like less than two that belongs to the left half right sir right got this any index that that's like greater than uh, you know not just greater than greater than or equal to this this line of l by two then that's going to belong to the right half right okay? sir. right sir. Got so it. that's why i just written this yes sir got okay. it yeah so that's what that was you know the mock mock two yes sir, i'm facing some problem with my portal so it's showing that you are not accessible to the portal because you are giving exam yeah yeah currently there is a mock exam you know that that it should be given right so because of that uh, you're not in access portal how to come out of that exam so we have to wait be logged no, in no, 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 you can't come out of it between this four to five you can't come out Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, sir, just a question mm -hmm. about the mock. Yes. I mean, the mock. I mean, the, which uh, the uh, mock is going on, right? So, after like the time is over, so would I mean would yeah. we be able to yes. access the? I mean, not portal. I mean, the questions. Can we see the questions in the portal yeah, or questions, somewhere else? The questions, maybe not. The questions, maybe not. Questions are not under issue, but the portal, portal, will will be able to access. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. Can so then we... Yes. Are any questions? Sir, so will you show the code? Yeah. So I can, I'll paste this code in chat box. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then, then we'll move on to this next problem. Yes, sir. Which is going to be here now a square matrix okay they're saying it is a diagonal matrix if the, if the entries outside the main diagonal are zero okay so what is so what is this diagonal 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 is you know where where matrix is very how it's like you know l of i of j right if i equals to j then then it's a diagonal okay so then if for you to check whether, whether it's a diagonal matrix or not First, you know, when when L of i other other than other than the case of i equals to j, if i not equals to j, L of i of j should be equal to zero. Correct? Not getting, sir. You're not getting it? No, sir. So Like this is a matrix, okay. One, zero, zero, 
Okay. So for the first element, the i value is zero as well as the j value is zero, right? Yes. For the second element here, hmm. the i value is zero, but the j value is one, correct? Yes. The third value, the i value is uh, zero. zero, but j value is two. Hmm. Okay. So only only for the first element in the first row, the i is zero as well as j is zero. Okay. Hmm. Similarly, in the second row, the first element i is two. But j, sorry, i is one, j hmm. is zero. Okay. Okay, but second element here, second element of second row, i, I is one plus j is one. So okay. you see here, here this this one, and then this one, as well as these two. Okay, there i is going to be equals to j. Hmm. Okay. okay, i equals j. So that particular that is a diagonal. So here this one one two that's a diagonal. Hmm. Okay, so For it to be a diagonal matrix, only this diagonal entries should be non-zero. Okay, the non-diagonal entries, that is these values. Okay, these values, and then these values, all the all other zeros, right? Mm -hmm. They should be zero. Okay. So there are two diagonals, right? One is one one two, and another one is zero one zero. So we should go for principal diagonal, right? Yeah, the principal diagonal, yes. So okay. generally, we go for principal diagonal only. Not the anti-diagonal. Okay. Clear? Yes. What right. I just explained. Currently, this this one zero 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 one zero 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 two. This is a this is a diagonal matrix. But let's say I give you one other example. One one zero and zero one zero 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 one. Is this a diagonal matrix? No. No. Why? Sir. Why not? Because uh, like zero comma one, zero comma one. Yes. Yeah. Actually, one, in this one. place, it should it should not have been one, right? If it has been zero, right. then it would have been diagonal matrix, correct? Yes. Okay. So you understood what a diagonal matrix is? Yes. Okay. And I assume that I was not getting that i and j part. Okay. You are not getting the i and j part. Mm hmm. I think that uh, we are iterating through uh, means list and list yeah. of lists here. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, what are these diagonal elements? The diagonal elements or the or the elements, their i equals to j, correct? That Or is no? row equal to column. Yeah, row equals to column. So wherever i equals to j, okay, they can be non-zero, okay? okay. But when i not equals to j, definitely they should be zero. Got it. Okay, for it to be diagonal matrix. Got it. Okay, then. So later, what do we have? We have a scalar. Okay, if the for it to be a scalar matrix, it should be a diagonal matrix. Okay, it should be a diagonal matrix, and also all the elements of all the diagonal elements should be equal. For example, this matrix is it a scalar matrix? No. Why not? Yeah. Diagonal is one It's value matrix. matrix yeah. Right. So, but what about? Okay, I'll just change this. Now, now is this a diagonal matrix? Sorry, is this is this scalar matrix? Yes, it is a scalar. But before that, it should have to be a diagonal matrix. Yeah, yeah. Currently, it's uh, I changed that uh, one to zero, right? So currently, it's a diagonal matrix. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the diagonal matrix, the scalar matrix two is clear, right? And identity mm -hmm. is. Yeah, clear. identity is a case where where all the elements should be equal. As well as they should be equal to one only. So here the second example, is it identity matrix? Yes. It is identity matrix, but not scalar. Yeah, I mean, if it is identity matrix, it is going to be scalar only. Okay. So is this a, is this identity matrix currently? This one? No. No, no sir. It is a scalar. That is scalar matrix. Yes, it's. Yeah. Okay. So hope all this is clear. Now we should write a function named matrix type that accepts a matrix as argument and return the type of matrix. Should be one of these strings: diagonal, scalar, identity, non-diagonal. Okay. So first, first you know, let's say like now what you should be doing is. Okay. 
should check you should check if the matrix is diagonal or not that's the first case okay and and if it is a diagonal you should check you should check whether it is scalar or not and then if it is a scalar you should, you should check whether that is a whether that is identity matrix or not okay clear clear sir okay so since since you should be printing only only one of diagonal scalar identity if the matrix is identity matrix we should not be printing scalar or diagonal you should only be printing identity okay okay clear yes sir okay so now that the question is clear and and we know what to check right we should we should be checking the elements and then comparing with, comparing it with the with the previous elements okay so i will assume initially diagonal i will assume it to be true okay and then the scalar also i will assume it to be true identity to i will assume it to be true okay how i should so it is a square matrix right so i can just take the take the length, length of rows now i should loop through the elements for i in range of plane of m okay so then for j in range of plane of m i need not actually use this plane of m okay i can directly mention n because n. i directly mention that okay so for j in range of n now if no let's say like i equals to j okay and m of j of j okay sorry i not equal to j and and m of i of j if it is is not equal to 0 what does this mean non diagonal yeah it is, it is non diagonal right so i should change the diagonal to be false Here? So, this is spelling of diagonal in line two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if the diagonal is false, then the scalar and uh, identity is also false. Okay. So, I can just actually change it as scalar to be false. I did not do this, but let me just do this. Okay. Is part clear? Yes. If 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 pi is not equal to j, then then m of pi of j if it is not zero, it should, ideally it should be zero. Okay, if it is not zero, then that means it's not a diagonal matrix. Okay. Now I can actually break out of the loop. Okay. I need not even like you know check for check for other elements. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Now if diagonal. Diagonal equals to false. Here also I can break. Okay. That is, I can break out of the entire loop itself, and the entire inner for loop as well as outer for loop. Okay. So basically, we check for diagonal until now. Is that clear until now? Until now, is the code okay? Yeah, it's okay. Sir, for i in range n and for j in range n. So yeah. what you are doing there? So there, basically, for i in range of n, the i is going to be the row. Okay. J is going to be the j is going to be the column value. Are basically, I'm keeping inside i. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. We are iterating inside i only. Okay, because for you to get for you to get each and every element, you should be should be looping through the all the elements, right? Yes. First, first we should loop through the row, then hmm. then we should loop through the column, no? Hmm. Okay, so that's what I'm doing there. Clear? So, sir, in uh, first row, we check the all the columns of zero, one, two. Hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, in the line number twelve, if you write break, then what do you need of line number thirteen and fourteen? Because if it break, then exit from loop, na? No? 
if in the in the line number 13 suppose if the line number 14 14 gets executed that means will come out of the first for loop itself see this the line number 12 break okay it it comes out of the this this column loop okay the column loop internal internal for loop you have right inside for loop the for for j in range of n that for loop you have right so it will come out of the that for loop and yeah. then then we exit from this for i in range n yeah so so this way the first break it exits it exits for j in range of n that for loop it gets it gets executed but the line number 14 that break what it does is it exits the it exits the for the, the i block also okay. the first for loop also it will be it will be executed it will be exited Sir, when line number thirteen executed, sir. What? Uh, line number thirteen, sir. When executed, sir. After break, sir. Line number ten. Yeah. Suppose, suppose if the, if the diagram is false, then then it will come out of the first for loop also. We can we can we can come out of all the for loops, right? If it's not diagonal, then we can come out of all the for loops, no? That's not right. Then, sir, why you not uh, write the if diagonal is equal to false in the bottom of uh, for i in range n? Why you write for j in range n in bottom? I'm, I'm see the if, di if diagonal equals false break that is like that is that is within within the for loop only. We have come out of the we we have come out of the ins inside for loop and then we we are writing that the line number thirteen and fourteen they do not belong to the ins inside for block. They belong to the out out of for block only. Okay. Okay. Are you getting what I'm saying? See for example this if I written there. Okay, then that means it belongs to the in inside for loop. Sorry, here. Yeah. Okay, so here, you no, know, I'm I'm bringing it like outside the for loop. Line number thirteen and fourteen, they are not there in this loop. They're in the, they're not. That's like. So, Okay, so here line number thirteen and fourteen, they belong to this for loop. Okay. 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 Got it, sir. So and until now we check we check for the diagonal. Okay, then. Okay, we will check for the. If five equals to j, okay, five equals j and m of i of j. I will say then we can put M of I of I only. Okay. Can you please uh, turn off the uh, indal bin? What? So disturbance is coming. That's why. From others or from my side? Not from your side, sir. Uh, actually, yeah, others, 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 please yeah. mute yourself. Okay. Okay. So this this you can check here itself or or let's say like you can you can check it out here. So here itself we can check if m of i of i, okay, it is not equals to m of zero, not o zero, m of zero of zero. So here, what I'm basically checking is, I told you that uh, one zero 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 two zero 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 one, okay. This is not a scalar matrix because what this this m of i of i here here i is equal to one there m of one of one it's not equal to this first element okay all the elements should be equal so basically if the if the m of i of i if it is not equal to m of zero of zero that means it's not a scalar matrix correct are you following me yes sir yes sir yes yes okay so Then that means scalar equals to false, as well as the identity also false. Okay, but we won't be coming out of the for loop. We we won't be coming out of the loop here because we still have to check for the diagonal or not. Okay, here. Hello, am I making sense there? Hello, sir. Actually, I am not getting anything. 
not getting anything no actually uh i was thinking like for this problem means why not do it separately separately like no check for diagonal and then like check for check for the yes. so no so also i have done this like i have defining defined three other function diagonal scalar and matrix and check if they are diagonal scalar matrix or not then i called them in matrix type function even that is also okay okay so we could we could be doing it in you know, a different different ways what i was trying to say here is punandu okay you can what you can do is let's say okay could you could be you know completely removing this okay until like until this part is clear we are checking for whether diagonal. it's diagonal okay. itself or not just the diagonal okay, until this part it's clear for everyone hmm. okay is it clear for everyone yes then, sir yes, let's say like now 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 if it's clear next we can go for next we can check you know whether whether the whether the elements are scalar or not okay hmm so now if now let me show this how if m of i of i if it's not equal to m of 0 of 0 here m in this i of i is, means same values means yeah, yeah, so yeah they are just checking the diagonal element in this particular row okay yeah, so for example in the first row what's the diagonal element if m of 0 of 0 hmm in the second row what is the diagonal element m of 1 of 1 m of 1 of 1 in the third row what's the diagonal element two m of 2 two. of 2 two. so i'm just checking that if the m of i of i it's if it's not equal to m of 0 of 0 then it's not a scalar right no it's not a scalar okay so this what this what i'm doing so if it's not scalar then obviously identity also it won't be there okay hmm. then even if it's scalar it may not be it may not be identity okay identity so let me just check that also if if m of i of i if it is not equals to 1 it's not equals to 1 mm. then identity also should be false no yes okay mm. here okay so m of 0 of 0 is the first element that we we check the first diagonal element yeah so it should be all be there means all the values should be same then only we can say it's a scalar if not yes if yes that's not the case then we will say scalar as i mean uh, set the flag to false right Yeah, entity to false also. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So now, this actually you can actually do it for an M of zero of zero also. That's line number twenty three. Even that is also okay, but doesn't matter. Okay. Now, now we check for whether it's identity or not, and scalar or not, diagonal or not. We have checked for everything. Hmm. Okay. So now we can just do it. If identity equals to true. Then we can directly print its identity matrix. Okay. Okay. And if scalar equals sir, to sir yeah. Line, sir, in this, uh, if uh, scalar is equal to true, or either I will write it elif scalar uh, semicolon if it's scalar. So it means true, na? Yeah, it is necessary to write uh, scalar is equal to is equal to true. Okay. Okay. You are just saying if identity will put is it. Uh, mm, yes. Yeah, I can add also. Yeah, that's like even better. Okay. Sir, in case they print identity, there is neither uh, commas. Which one? Can I repeat? So hmm? identity will be a string, not a. Um, yes, sir. Two a value in line twenty six. Line twenty six. Printing the value. Line twenty six, sir. Identity should be in quotation. Mm. Yes, sir. It it is fine. Okay, it is fine. Either way, it's okay. Let's say like no, no, sir. It will it will return true or false. No. Okay, okay. You have to print diagonal. Okay, okay. You have to print diagonal. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay, okay fine, fine. And let me check whether that's capital or not. It's not capital. So, sir, everything is small, sir. Okay. Okay. So, elif scalar. If it's a if it is a scalar. Mm -hmm. We should print scalar. No, so we have to return, sir. No, we don't have to print. We, we are not writing a function, right? We so, are writing a function. Sorry, sorry. 
we have to return it we have yeah to... yeah yeah sir. you have to return the in return identity return return okay mm -hmm. so like let me just give this some small trick there let's say like uh, you know since you are like returning here instead of doing all this break and all you can directly here itself you can return return non diagonal return non diagonal non diagonal okay. hmm. because once you once you hit this return once you once you you know once this return get executed it will end the entire not just the for loop it will, it will end the function itself the function itself will stop okay okay suppose let's say like if, if, if this line number 13 got executed that means it won't even go for other other things you know it, so you can you can just like i mean stop there itself you need not even go for all this other things okay, because okay. there you are only checking for diagonal or not right hmm okay clear this part is it clear is this clear Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Then, then you know, currently, if it is not identity matrix and if it's not a scalar matrix, scalar matrix, then it's going to be what diagonal matrix. Okay. Here, here, you know, if it did not get returned, if it if the line number thirteen did not get executed, and then and then we came until here, that means it's it must be it must be one of diagonal identity or scalar. Okay, am I making sense? Mm. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's all. You know, we are done with the with this problem. Okay. So first, first, you know, we have checked whether it's diagonal or not. If it's like non-diagonal, we have returned it there itself. Okay. And let's say like if it's a diagonal, you know, we have checked for we have checked for this uh, the scalar or not, and then and then whether it's identity or not, we have checked. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. The the second for loop we can directly uh, put it above the. Uh... Yeah, we can. Okay, it's like some mistake. Sorry, line number twelve. That should be. Oh, it should okay. be equal to zero, right? Line number twelve. Which one? Okay, let me remove these lines first. Uh, line line number. Line number twelve. M of M of I of J equal to zero. When it's no 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 in this case it's line number eight eight. Okay, no. if i not equal to zero, then if yeah, it's not equal to if it's not equal zero, then it's not diagonal, right? If it is equal zero, then it will be diagonal. Okay, yes. if it is equal okay, zero, okay. then mm -hmm. it's a diagonal. We are checking whether it's like non equal not equal zero or not. Okay, okay. okay. it's we are checking for non diagonal. Okay, correct. Right. Okay, so now let me share this. Yeah, it's working fine. Okay. Any questions? No. Yeah. Yes, sir. The uh, second for loop for i in range at line number ten is there, sir? Second for loop. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, that can be uh, uh, instead of using that for, can we uh, write from line eleven to uh, the remaining code from after line six? Like like from here itself, we we can write. You are saying, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We can we can use uh, we can use this for loop itself. Okay, but just to make things clear, I just written it like that. Okay. Previously, one student got confused when I used that. So that's so why that. If we are using that for loop there, then only from line eleven to fifteen we have to substitute. Uh, in right, the... right, right, right. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, is the problem clear? We paste this code in the chat box. Okay. Now, if it's clear, then we'll move on to the next problem. If we mock four. Okay, now the para is a sequence of space-separated words. 
all words will be in lower case there will be single space between conjugate words no other special characters are there write a function and exact count that accepts a string para and an integer n you have to return true if there is at least one word in para that occurs exactly n times so this is like uh, here they are saying in a paragraph in paragraph in a, in a para there are going to be so many words right so here what they are saying is it should be returning it should be it should be returning true if if in those if in those words there are like exact there is like at least one word that occurs n times otherwise it should be returning false okay the problem is clear or not yes yes sir yes sir now so when the problem is clear the para is uh, it accepts a string para is a string okay and and where the words are separated by space so first okay first we should be first we should be you know getting words out of it so words equals to para dot split split based on space so then what we can do is so we can use dictionary right Uh, we can use dictionary and even without using dictionary also we can do this show you how per word in words okay, or per word in set of words you know what set does right it removes the duplicates yeah it will remove the duplicates so basically we are checking for the unique, unique number of words there okay words is a list but set of words is going to be a i mean it's just going to be the Unique, unique words in the list. Okay? okay, so for each unique word, so what we can do is we can count the number of, you know, like we can count, uh, count equals to words dot count of word. You know, you know what the count function does, right? Count function gives the number of instances of this particular word in the list, in the list words. Okay. Okay. So if the this count is equals to n, okay, if, the, if that count is equals to n, that means this particular word occurred exactly n times. Okay. Hmm. Got it. Then we can return true. Correct. Hmm. Am I am I correct in this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir. Now let's say like, sir, in there, line, huh. sir, yeah? in line four, uh, words dot count words. So words count in line two words para dot splits because in yeah, sad, yeah, yeah. in sad so, words there is a uh, no duplicate words means no. Here, here in words in words there are going to be duplicates. Yes, in sad right. words there is no duplicates. Let me just write it this way. Okay, set words equals to set of words. Okay. Yes. I'll write it. For now, instead of set words, I'll mention it like unique words. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. For word in unique words, okay, I'm counting the number of number of occurrences of that word in the in the you know. In in the, in this list words, not in the set, okay? Mm -hmm. Clear? Clear. Yes. Okay. Now, let's say like we did not, you know, we have looped through, we have looped through all the all the unique words, but we did not return true at all. What does that mean? That means there is no word that occurred n times, correct? Mm -hmm. So once if we, even when we, you know, once we come out of the for loop, if we if we did not return anything, that means There is no word that occurred n times, so we can return false. Okay. Clear? Okay. Yes. Sir, what if we don't use set words? I mean, basically, we don't convert that. Yeah, you can, you can, you can still, you can still, you know, it will still work. Okay, even if you do like for word in words also, it will still work. But you might be looping through the more more occurrences. Okay, that's the only thing. Okay. It will still work. The entire thing will still work. 
because i did it like uh, means i created whatever these these were values were right i created a list and i did it through it and check if that value that yeah, particular yeah. value is equal to an and i incremented the count if that yeah, count was equal to okay. okay. hmm. yeah even incrementing by count is also okay you can you can just check the count and then you know when that count is equals to n then you can like but the problem with that is you should be you should be you know coming out of the for loop and then checking the count for each word again so for that i guess you should be using dictionary or something but yes, yes, yes. if you just use the word start count it will directly give you the count of that particular one okay okay i thought that we can't use functions yeah i mean this this is this you can use okay see like basic one so that you can use Okay. Okay. Now let me run this and check if it's working. Yeah, no, it works. Okay. So, do you have any questions now? No, sir. Okay. So, if there are no other questions, you know, now what's going to happen is, you know, I'm going to take a short break of three minutes. Okay, then, you know, so there's going to be one other instructor who will be, who will be taking it from here. Okay, Karthik sir will be taking it from here. Okay, so let me just wait for Karthik to join. Yeah, he's yeah, Ram, yeah, I've joined. So how to end this mock, sir? How to end the mock? There is no submission button. How to come out of the mock on the the mock from four to five? You're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, so that 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 I'm not aware of it. Okay, so I mean the the mock that's happening outside, outside you know that's that that I'm not aware. So I I cannot be helping you on that end. But generally in the exam, once the time is over, we we can uh, close the tab or what? How should we can directly no, close the tab? Close the tab. We can close the tab. But before that, just ensure that you know you have submitted all the questions. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. If you are away from the system, uh, it won't uh, accept the test, sir. If you uh, move out of the uh, see, screen. yeah, it won't be accepting. It's like you know that that particular thing it will be recorded. So uh -huh. you know, if there are like many number of instances, uh, you are done that. So then then your scores will be will not be considered. Okay. Even if once if you move out of the camera, it will be uh, your exam is not left. It will be left incomplete. It's like you know there are going to be some some threshold, some number which you should not be crossing. So yeah, but but it's always better better that that you don't that that you don't move away at all. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so from now onwards, I mean from the mock five onwards, Karthik will be taking taking. Okay, so Karthik sir will be taking. Okay, so I'll be sir? leaving. Yeah. So can you uh uh. So actually, na, uh, my dash my stats two page is so, uh, showing that you are giving another exam. You are not uh, allowed to yes, change yes. your. Yeah, because because you know currently this four to five this exam is happening. You will not be able to access access any of the any of the course. Any sir, of the course portal. Sir, not but to today is the deadline, and I have not submitted but, my. You'll you'll be able to access like after five or so, I suppose. Okay, so you'll be able to access. You know, five, just sir. can't be for the, from for the small small duration. You'll not be able to access. Uh, okay. After how much time can I, I will be ex uh, like? Can, can just check like after half an hour or so. You should be able to access. Two three hours. Half an hour. Half an hour. Half an hour. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, Karthik. Uh, so you can continue now. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thanks. You can. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my my voice is audible, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes sir. Okay, so, so yeah. So uh, I want to ask you that uh, uh the PPA uh ten of the week six uh, I am I am not una I am unable to do that. Uh, second part of the uh, second code of that PPA ten. Okay. 
uh, right so see uh, the the plan for today session is to cover uh, you know as many mock questions as possible so we'll go through that in the remaining hours and uh, if we have time we you know we'll get back to that if not tomorrow i think tomorrow also there's a session i believe uh, hello sir we'll discuss it then hello sir yeah i just want to know uh, in dictionary how we compare to dictionary we compare to dictionary according to key or uh, value it depends on the question uh, sometimes they may ask you to compare according to key but they may also ask you to compare it according to value right so it depends uh, so these questions will come to it in the end right so what we'll do now is uh, given that we have to cover as many mock problems as possible let's try to do that right but sir i search on internet i found like we compare according to value and uh, he give the example of uh, the ियल Oh, yeah, but but anyway, we'll come to that, right? So see, these are yeah. like not particularly relevant to the problems we are solving because see that the problem that we are currently working on is a dictionary, right? So that may clear certain things, right? So I want to stick to the agenda that uh, Ram has given for the session, right? So he has discussed four problems. Yeah, 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 discuss. Yeah, so I like to continue from that. Yeah, continue. All right. Hello, sir. Uh, if it, yeah, so. shall we finish this problem and then get back if it is related to one of the four problems then we can discuss if not uh, shall we finish five and can get back to that yes sir okay so yeah so this is because see, what will happen is as and when we discuss these problems the solution to these problems several questions that you might have will get resolved right if they don't get resolved then we'll uh, get back to that okay so this is the fifth problem so you are given so gurunath is some popular store inside iitm and so that's like any store it maintains a list of transactions right so so maybe some user has purchased you know notebooks pencils erasers files and uh, that particular user has purchased four quantities of uh, four notebooks one pencil one eraser and one one file right so this is nothing but a summary of the items purchased by one user okay so this is represented in the form of this dictionary right so this is a dictionary corresponding to each transaction you have a dictionary okay and every transaction will have two things it will have what transaction id is that and what are the items purchased by the user okay and if the user has purchased uh, multiple items then each item itself has a dictionary corresponding to it Okay, so this is like a very complex, complicated dictionary. What we'll do is, uh, I'll just quickly take you through what this dictionary object is actually. Right. So I'm going to call this a transaction. Right. So I'm going to call this a transaction. So this is some dictionary object. Now, can someone tell me what will happen if I run this piece of code? Transaction of the ID. What do you think you will so get? So what do what do you say? So if you run transaction of TID, uh, what is actually happening? So this uh, is sir, it will be the uh, trans of TID. Sir, it will be the Guru Nath. Uh, this Correct. ID. Yeah. So eight five two eight. Right. So this will be the values. Value. Okay. So this is the value corresponding to this key. And uh, so what will happen if I enter? I will run it. But before I run it, what will happen if I enter transaction of items? so uh, you will you can access the whole uh, the uh, dictionary present in individual the... dictionary present yes, sir. the yes yes okay. it will return the list ha huh? okay list this will be a list yes. right so this will be a list so this will be a list so let's run that and see uh, so this is the list right so notice that you have this the entire list is there right so now let's go one more level into this list now sir uh Actually, yeah. your screen is froze, frozen somehow. 
Ah, oh, okay, okay. So sorry. We are uh, unable to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you for pointing it out. Hi, I was. I'm ta- I'm sharing this tab. That's why uh, I should have I should have shared the another tab. So I thought you were. I had already shared that, and I was talking all along. So sorry. Okay, so this is transaction. The I am just. I've just copy pasted the dictionary, and uh, earlier what I did was I did. PID right so when i try when i did pid and when i ran this particular cell i got the value corresponding to that key right now what i asked you was if i run items if i query for the items key i'll get this value right so this is what you all told me so yeah so but uh, trans is a list of dictionary right ah uh, we'll come to that right so i am just looking at one item in that list just okay, one sir. transaction okay, in that list Okay, now I'm going to ask you what will happen if I if I do this. What will happen if I run the cell now? What what output will do you think will will you will produce will be produced here? Sir, notebook, pencil, eraser. I yes, guess so. Are you sure? Maybe it will throw error. Okay, why do you think it will throw an error? So because. Um, it is a list and we should uh, like use uh, item of zero of zero of that particular name then it will be correct if you right, take so like items of zero then name then it correct. will so one correct. way to test it in your terminal is to ask this question okay what is the type of transaction of items right if you run this you will see that Sir, dic- it is a list right as you just said right it's a list Yes. Oh, okay. You uh, write items. Okay. Yeah. So this is a list. Now, what happens if transaction of items of two, right? What 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 do you think will happen? It is a. It is okay. Right. So that will be the dictionary. Correct. Right. It will be the dictionary corresponding to the eraser purchase. Right. Now, if I want to find the price of a single eraser, what what should I do to this particular line of code? So Again, then you the... should write after this two uh, price. price. Yes, sir. Price, in right? uh, in this code. Okay, so this code. is this is the price of one eraser. Now, if I want the cost of, assume that quantity here is, let me change this to say six erasers. Say someone has purchased six erasers. If I want the total amount of money required to purchase six erasers, so how do I change this code? Sir, into same, but you have to just uh, write ah uh, uh, instead of price, you have to write quantity. Q T Y. Okay. Same so have, thing. Yes, sir. Right. Quantity. So I have to write this. So this is what this is the price of one eraser into the price of into the number of erasers that I have purchased. Right. So this will to run this, you will get fifteen into six ninety. Right. So this is the cost of purchasing multiple quantities of one item. Okay. So this is. This is what it is, right? Now, what I do is for each item in items, right? What do I do? For each item in items, I I do the same thing instead of since items. So is, capital I know for in items. Sorry. In for item in items, so I should be capital. So ah, yes. No, no, I have, right. I have not defined what items is, so I just. Conceptually understand this. We'll go back there and uh, work this out. So for each we item, can write item uh, transaction, right? Means for item in transaction, then each will be a. Ah, uh, right, right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. what I'm saying is just understand it conceptually. We'll go back and change this, right? So this will change into what? It will change into an index, right? Okay. So this will no, change sir, into. No, sir. It will throw error. No, no. Because... This will throw an error because I have not defined stuff. But assume that there are. Okay. If you want. If you want Great. to be, if you want this to work for this code itself, okay, let me uh, make this proper for this code. So for uh, for item in transaction of items, you have item is what? What kind of an object is item? Sir, so, uh, dictionary. So it's a list. Item is a list. Item is what? Dictionary. List. Okay, I'll ask this question first. What is transaction of items? What kind of an object is this? That's a list. That's, That's a list, list, right? So yes. item is what? Dictionary. Item is a dictionary, right? So I want to I want to grab the price of 
the this item okay i want to grab the price of this item and i want to grab the number of quantities of this item right so this is what this is the cost of purchasing this particular item right so this is the cost of purchasing this item now yeah. if i want the total cost what what should i add to this piece of code so cost equals zero cost equal to zero right so now yes, if you run sir. this you get the cost three right? zero so, five so if you print the cost if you look at the cost it is 380 right so we can let's see uh, very yes sir uh, 15 uh, you have done 6 here that's why it's showing yeah so let me just uh, quickly check that 15 into 6 plus 18 into 1 right so what is that that is 380 right so what we have done so far is the cost associated with one transaction okay so is there is does everyone understand this so yes, i just want to understand sir. how transaction of items return a dictionary means no no uh, this oh you mean how how this is a dictionary yes okay, but earlier picture. it was not a dictionary it was a list of dictionaries like what we did earlier before this all calculation uh, okay may i sir yeah uh to so name the, the trans it's transaction is a dictionary mm -hmm. you got that and ti tid is the key and items is a key yes okay uh, so uh, in here for the and for that is a tra transaction item fit on the value of items item returns the value of items so value of items is a list of dictionary right transaction yeah hmm. okay and for each item and and each item in transaction item is a di dictionary okay okay now i got it so these are uh, the list of text these are the dictionaries yeah. right name right okay. i yeah item item is each dictionary name name notebook file 50 quantity code is a dictionary hmm. and that one that one is one item and then co cost will calculate for the item price 50 into quantity four Okay, and, so and the so, item will yeah. be just the iterator for these dictionaries now. Yeah. Okay. okay no, so, I... what we'll do now is we'll just uh, go ahead and run this code, right? One more. We just need one more layer of uh, loop, one more loop, right? So, notice that we have been given that this is a list of dictionaries, right? So, ants is actually list of dictionaries. So it'll be like. Transaction one, transaction two, so on and so forth. Till let's say transaction n. There are let's say n transactions. Each of these transactions is going to be a dictionary, like the one we just saw, right? So for transaction in trans, okay, transaction is now a dictionary, right? Let me just mention that explicitly. Transaction is a dictionary, okay? What what do we have to do? We have to find out the cost of this transaction, right? So for each item in this transaction okay there are so many items that you have purchased in this particular transaction for each item what do you do you look at the price of the item that you have purchased and the number of quantities of this particular item you multiply them to get the cost okay and then you add them to the current cost that you have found out so far all this will be equal to the cost of this transaction Okay, so the summary. Finally, what do we have to do? We have to find out a summary. So we have to find out the summary of all transactions. So this you will maintain this cost in one another dictionary, which you are going to define now, called summary. Right. So summary of cost, or rather, let let's not introduce a new variable. I'll just say that the cost of this transaction is cost. Okay. Is everyone clear with what has happened so far? Yes, sir. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll create a. So what do you have to return? Always look at the return type. It's a list of dictionaries, right? So I'll create a list first. I'll call the list summary. So I need to create a list of dictionaries out of which. So you is... should append this a uh, dictionary to the summary. Exactly right. So uh, we have to append the dictionary, but before that, notice that we have Post, to. Yes, sir. I T I D also. Right. So T I D also. Right. So let's go ahead and do that. So, how do we find the T I D? The T I D of this transaction is simple, right? It's the transaction. You use the key. You use the key, and then you get the transaction ID. So, 
you have cost is in capital tid is all in caps okay this is the tid this is the cost and this is the dictionary that you'll have to append to your list okay mind you you are appending a dictionary to a list okay, you are appending a dictionary to a list okay and this is a list of dictionary as as requested by the one who said the question okay so now you can return this dictionary sorry the list of dictionaries shall we run this and see if we get the correct answer or not we we'll run this once okay there is some error so for each item in transaction of items that doesn't have a colon so Yes. For each, remove that each. For each item, they still serve. I got uh, kind of confused. CP, CP syntax. Okay, so for item in. Okay, so that is two out of two public test cases and uh, three out of five private test cases. Right. So, I'll just go back to the code once. Is there anyone who has not followed? What we have done. Sir, I just want to summarize means if I am getting it right or not. Yeah. So trans is actually a list of dictionary, right? So yeah. when we iterate through that uh, that transaction value with the trans, so transaction is actually a dictionary in itself, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And from there we are getting the TID because it is the first value that will be present in each of the dictionary. First key. Uh, one of the keys. Yeah. Yeah, one of the keys. Now for the for the cost, what we are doing is we are again iterating through that dictionary itself of the items. What items is actually a list of dictionaries. So basically, uh, the items, whatever values will be present in the items, will be a dictionary in itself, right? Correct. You are. You are right. Yeah. Now we just add the cost from the price and the quantity, multiply each of the values, make a final cost, and append it to the list. Yeah, you make a dictionary out of the cost and TID, and then you append the dictionary to a list. Okay, I got it now. Basically, this manipulation, what is happening in the bit when we can't check it within the portal. You said that we can check it, but how we can check it within the portal itself? Within the portal itself, you'll have to print the the, the biggest weapon that you have is a print statement, right? So, what you'll have to do is even before you start writing the function, you can uh, within the function you can print say type of type of this object right so you run this ignore whatever error you get that is immaterial just look at what actual output you get right so you get list list right so and then you can once you know that it's a list you can then ask a question like okay what is the first element of the list what is the type of the first element of the list uh, not just type you can also print First element itself, right? Just to get a feel of uh, what that particular element is all about. So, if you print it, you will see that the first element of the list is a dictionary, and the dictionary is actually this Gurunath TID uh, Gurunath and whatever we have seen, right? So that is actually the first element. I got of... confused here only, sir, because it says that it's a dictionary, and within that there is an item. So whenever I iterate through that dictionary. I used to think like it's uh, it's a list because items is a list, but now I got it that we are iterating inside the items. That's why yeah. we can't say that it's a list. It's a dictionary. Yes. Right. Yeah. Got it. All right. Huh? Okay. So can we move on to the next problem? Can you solve? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So can you solve the PPA or uh, ten for me? Ah, uh, we'll do that. We'll at least finish some three, at least two more. Let's okay, do it, okay, and sir. then uh, we'll go back. So this is like kind of a tough problem. So if we have, if we sir, have happened. Can you see the last code? Uh, share as in paste it. Yeah. On on the chat, you mean? Yes. Uh, one second. How you do you uncomment and comment entirely? Control, uh, control forward slash will do it in one go. I thought it is not working. It works in VS Code only. I thought. All right. So, so to six, six is a bit tough. So 
must not be discouraged if you are not able to solve it or understand the solution in first go right so this is again a throwback to the ct days where you worked with you know the score so status so this type of question is coming on the opt sir and uh, you should be prepared to handle these kinds of sir i invest one of hour on that but sir I'm... some of these only yes sir after the five sir yeah this is tough right as i said this is like very tough so uh, i mean you can expect the the first sir, question not for you like, sir only for us ah uh, no i mean uh, even for me right so this is tough for me also so uh, this is kind of one of the toughest problems that you would have seen in the uh, course so far right so it's okay if you uh, don't if you're not able to solve this in the first in the first attempt sir the previous code that you shared uh, that was uh, means it was not pasted fully i guess after append it was just truncated uh oh, okay uh, so you just have to return that so just add that summary part and return it I okay well, that list part right uh, yeah, sorry the dictionary and then append that yeah right? yeah okay. okay right so this problem 6 is what what it's trying to say is that you basically have the score data set i think you would have seen this in week 6 right so you would have seen the score data yes, set yes so easy one yeah so in in the score data set uh, what happens is that you have multiple students right each student is a dictionary right each student is represented by a dictionary now you are allowed to form groups for a particular subject let's say for mathematics you are allowed to form a group now the conditions for forming a group is as follows right so if you take any two students in the group they should their mark should be similar right so for example if you if you have a group of five students in uh i just write this down i have the code i'll delete the code and start from scratch so if you have let's say okay, if you have five students in in group right five students in a group so the, there are two things for a group right it should be for a particular subject right so let's call it five students in a mathematics group right so th this group is for mathematics the condition is that the marks of any two students in this group should not be above some limit let's say this mark limit variable here is 10 that means uh, and there are five students right let me call the five students a b c d e the marks of these five students in mathematics is a b c d e right so these are math marks of five students now for this to be a valid group what what should happen is that mod of a min mod is absolute value i hope you know that right so this should be less than or equal to 10 a minus c should be less than or equal to 10 right not just this but any pair of any pair of students you take let's say c and e right so c and e should be less than or equal to 10 means that c shouldn't have scored you know more than 10 marks compared to e or you shouldn't have scored less than 10 marks compared to e the the difference between their marks should be Uh, at most 10 that's what the question is asking you right so this is a valid group and the size of this group is 5 okay this is a group of size 5 this is a valid group of size 5 right valid group of size 5 do you get the idea of what a group is so what a valid group is yes sir okay so now what you have to do is you have to find This is what you have to find. Find the largest group possible. Okay, maybe you can find form a group of, you know, two students. Maybe you have a larger group which has five students, right? So if the largest group that you can form has five students, you have to return that value five as an answer. Okay. Okay. Has everyone understood the the question? What what is being asked in the question? You have to find. So that's why that. the function's name is crowded group right a crowd is what a crowd is a large number of people right so you you are looking for the largest grouping of students in a in a particular subject having this difference between their marks bounded by mark limit right it should not be more than mark limit okay do you, does anyone want a concrete example or is this good enough so i would like to have a concrete example okay right so let's take max marks of five students instead of a b c d e let me say that 
uh, so the parameters that i'm going to pass to the function are score data set subject will be mathematics mm. okay and the mark limit is going to be uh, say 5 so mark limit e- equal to 5 right so these are the five students uh, their marks are say, okay let's be little more generous 60 Uh, e4, e2, and 65. Right. So, mm. do you think this is a valid group or not? These are five five students. These are mm. their ma- max marks. And max maximum va- marks can be only five. Right. So, maximum oh, the difference can be only at most five. Right. So, which yes. means. So, is the difference between any two students is it less than or equal to five? Is that satisfied for this group? Oh, sixty minus sixty-two is two. Sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. 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 Okay, so this is a valid group, right? So this is a valid group. Now, maybe for some other group, you have, uh, you have, let's say, let's say some other group. Now, do you think the second group is valid? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, no. Even if there is a single pair of students, in this case, the first and the last student whose difference is more than mark limit, then it means it's an invalid group, right? So this is an invalid group, right? Yes. So this is an invalid. Yeah. So here five is at uh, absolute five or the uh, positive five. It is absolute. Five, right. So when when we say difference, we mean the the absolute value of a minus b. If a and b are the marks of two students, we when we say difference, we always Sir, talk the, about the. Then positive. how can you write sixty four? Uh, sixty four. Why not? Sir, because uh, sixty six is just one more than sixty five. You write. You cannot write it. But sixty five and sixty four, you can write. Correct. How? Uh, no. The in so the. This is not a valid group, right? Because sixty-six minus sixty is six, right? Six is greater than the mark limit. Therefore, this okay. is an invalid group. Okay, sir. Okay, so these are. Uh, this is what the question is asking you, right? You could. We should find out the maximum group size. Okay, here the maximum group size, let's say, is five. Okay, maybe for some other subject and some other mark limit, uh, you will have a better group size. So, if you have understood this properly, you have. You will be. You should be able to answer this question. What if I set mark limit equal to zero? Okay, sorry, not zero. Uh, okay, zero. So uh, no, zero is a bit tough. No, let's say hundred. How many? What will be the group size that your function should return? Sir, zero, I guess. Each and every student, sir. Each and every student, sir. Okay, what will be the group size then? I think hundred. What is the group size? What what are you counting? What do you mean by size of a group? Sir, zero, I guess. Size of group, like you mean? Total number of people in the group. Because mark limit is equals to the actual marks, like it can be uh, less than or equal to hundred. Any student can have hundred in the, your data set. Correct. If any student can have. Any student can be in a group. What will be the size of the group? Total strength of the subject. Total strength of the subject. Right, right. Yes. So total number of students in the class, right? In this case, everyone is taking max. Everyone has taken physics, whatever. So it will be the class strength, right? All students basically form the group. So the entire class is the group. Oh, so, okay. right? If if as you keep decreasing mark limit, you will see that the size of the group decreases, 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 and you hope you get the. Logic, right? So that's that's what we need to do. So there is one way of solving this. I'll I'll write the solution for that. Uh, but can someone tell me what that method could be? What what is the first thing that comes to your mind? So first we find the we will create a list. Maximum value of a list we can find. So it also says like subject should be valid. So first we can start with the list of subject. If uh, the subject uh, that is given in the argument is present in the list, then we have to continue. Otherwise, we can just uh, 
रिटर्न नथिंग और और मेक अ लिस्ट एंड अपेंड एवरी ईयर एवरी मार्क ऑफ दैट सब्जेक्ट इन द लिस्ट ओके दैट इज द फर्स्ट प्लेस टू स्टार्ट ओके वी विल स्टार्ट विद दैट क्रिएट अ लिस्ट सी दिस सी दिस लिस्ट इज this dictionary is what this dictionary has so much information that we don't need everything right what do we need we only need the marks of the student right we don't need anything else in fact we need only the marks of the student in say mathematics or physics whichever subject we are interested in right so the first thing that we'll do is we'll collect the marks of collect the marks of all students in this subject, right whatever that subject is okay so what is uh, let me remind you of this part what is course data set it's a list of dictionaries a list of dictionaries where each dictionary is a student right so i'm what what we are going to do is for students in correct right, for student in score data, data score data set what are we going to ask so we are going to ask student is mind your dictionary we are going to look at the score of the student in the subject that is just this right I, do you all agree that this is the score of the student yes, in the subject sir. we are going to add this to uh, let's say scores right scores we are going to add this to some list called scores so will this work fine is there any error that this will throw sir that subject uh, we are taking it from the user right we are taking it from the user right assume that user has passed that it that is to a the key content. to the dictionary yeah okay. okay so if i will scores now store whatever is required or Will is it is my code missing something? Yes, sir. Sir, so you have to initialize the scores list. Okay, so this is the scores list. Okay, now we have all the scores of every student in the class for this particular subject. Now, if you want, when you are writing, if you are in the exam and if you want to know if you are on the right track, you can print scores. Right? Remember that print command is the only thing that will help you during the exam. Right? And you must know. You must look at the first line and ignore the error that comes in your uh, portal, right? Because in this case, no error is there. But then uh, look at only the first line of your output, so you get the scores of all the students in some subject, right? In this case, it's physics, right? So uh, that so is. Sir, we can sort the list. Okay, <clears throat> that's the suggestion I have now. Why? Why do you think sorting the list is helpful? It is easier to. Uh... find the mark limit okay, okay so i will take that suggestion we are going to sort the list so how do we sort the list uh, so we will uh, find the least element in the like, let's say least is equals to l uh, whatever it is scores of 0 then if we check we will check for x in scores if uh, x is less than the Sorry, x uh, is uh, l of zero is less than l of i is less than that particular thing. Then we will change the uh, list equals that thing, and then okay. we will append into the a new list. Okay, all right. Okay. Sir, sir, can you please explain the sixteenth line, sir? Can you please explain sixteenth line? Oh, this uh, student is a dictionary, right? So student is this particular dictionary. not this dictionary per se but some dictionary that look like this okay sir okay so we are looking at let's say the subject is physics so we are we are extracting this value from that dictionary so that's why we have written uh, student of subject so think about this as some dictionary of my uh, physics okay subject is physics and uh, okay in that we are we are taking the value of score right sir uh, subject is physics the key is physics we okay. want the value corresponding to that subject okay fine sir okay so uh, this is what we have now so the other suggestion that i've got is to sort it right so let's sort it by the traditional way that sar has done in the lecture so we'll first find the minimum element and then uh, do all that right so i don't want to use the variable scores here itself so i'll just turn this into l right i think changes so scores will now be the list into which i sort l right scores will be sorted list l right so what i'll do is for score in or say it's for x in l okay if x is 
I want to sort this in ascending order. So ascending order, right? So ascending sort. So if, if x is less than value, then, then the, I mean, is equals to x. Right? So, so now we have found out the into the sorted. So first we write the mini find uh, what is. Uh, yeah, what what mini? Right? Right. right. So what I'll do is I'll do it slightly differently here. So what what we'll do is we'll we'll keep removing this from. Uh, okay, no, that will lead to confusion. So, so we can do also with uh, two for loops. Right. We'll do that. So for for uh, i in range length of. Right. So we'll maybe one. start this as the number of elements in the list. In the list. scores. Right, so for i in range of uh, n, what yeah, are okay. we doing? Let's say the the minimum element is equal to length of uh, sorry l of zero. Okay, this is the minimum element. So if x is now I have found out uh, what and then append into new list and then remove from new uh, last list. Uh, right. So score dot append of mini. Yeah, and then l dot remove of mini sir yeah sir we, sir, we can also use our uh, like local uh, local removing uh, defined function uh, you mean a function inside a function or no sir like we can uh, write a function for removing uh, the elements then we can use it like yes, yeah that that is also fine Okay. Right, so I, I'll I'll just change this into a while loop. In, if you are not, if if you are just maybe to expose you to that also. So see, uh, what I'm doing is the following, right? So initially L is not empty, right? L has uh, n elements. Okay, L has n elements. So first I'm going in while L is not L is not empty, right? So I'm just picking out the first element and calling that mini. And now in this loop, I'm finding out. What mini is right, and I'm appending it to mini, and, and I'm removing mini from L. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So when I do this n times, what will happen to L? If I keep doing this, uh, if I keep running this while loop n times, after the n n iteration, what will be the value of L? So empty list. Empty list, right? So when L becomes empty, you will exit the loop, right? So this is just a slightly different way of writing the same thing. Right? As long as L is not empty. Keep finding the minimum element. The moment L becomes empty, you have sort. You have like transferred all the elements from L to uh, S. Sorry, L to scores. Therefore, get out of the list or get out of the loop. That's what we have done. So here we can. Yeah, please go on. No sir. Any questions? So let me just print this and see if the sorting process is. Is correct or if there is some error here? Okay, so forty-one, forty-three, so on. Uh, sorted, right? So we can just check for the first two cases. You see that it is sorted. Okay, so sorting has happened more or less correctly. So we can now proceed. Sir, in the examination, we cannot use the sort method. You can, uh, but uh, yeah, you can, right? So. But if the question asks you not to use, then you won't be able to. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So this is the sorted scores. No score scores is a sorted list, right? So we have the sorted scores for all the students. So let's take a let's use a running example so that we don't get lost. Assume for for example that scores is fifty, fifty three, fifty five, sixty, whatever, right? So this is scores, and mark limit is say. Okay, so this is what we are working with now. How do you find groups, groups of students, for this subject such that the difference is less than or equal to ten? How will you do that? We can run two loop. First loop will hold a one of the value, let's say fifty, and it will check the remaining remaining one by iterating each of them. If the difference between them is less than the mark limit, then we can append it, right? Okay, let's try that. So for S one, S one is the student that, you're that going to have. That doesn't ensure the difference between another two marks. 
sorry it doesn't ensure the difference between other two marks only it ensures the difference between the first selected and the rest ah uh, that is true that is also true so how do we solve that problem then so i am saying that okay i am giving you this hint right you can solve this problem using a single loop can you think of a solution which which you know just goes through the list once and then so solves the problem find uh, max is a range of what it should be equal to tensor yeah. minimum and max yeah. range is it we can use the range range and then see how many figures are inside the range okay that's a good idea so okay tell me the step by step process for that right how do you what what will i write first okay so let me give you this plan let's do you think this works or not right so for every element in this list starting from left to right let's let let me ask this question right assume that the smallest so yeah, i'm going to ask this question what the smallest entry or, or the the student with the least mark in the group right i'm going to find who that student is right let me say that that student is 53 okay so once you fix the student who has scored the least mark in the subject in the group then can you tell me what will what what all can be the marks of remaining students in the group uh, least plus the limit least whoever is having limit. least plus that limit mark limit within okay. that range that is correct so the the answer to two is the least mark a okay, least mark person let's say 53 53 plus mark limit right if i write 53 plus mark limit whatever it is that can be the greatest mark right anyone who has scored between least mark and greatest mark can be a part of my group correct anyone who is outside these two ranges right the range of least mark so this is a closed interval in the math notation okay, anyone outside this range cannot be a part of my group do you all agree with this Sir. but yes. here how to find the least mark the uh, we when we sorted the list then least mark would be the first number of the list we then not be the first number right it could be any one of the so that's why we need a loop right we loop through the entire list fixing each element as the least mark and seeing what the group size is yes right so what we'll do is for least mark in scores okay you assume that this is the least mark now what is the max mark you calculate this calculate this as so least mark, least mark plus mark limit right uh, so mark. this is the maximum mark now okay now i am kind of i may forced to use one more loop can i yeah, do it without one more loop looks like you need to uh, okay. use one more loop hmm yeah so i am kind of stuck right so i thought we could do it in one loop but it turns out we can't so slight change of uh, so the approach is still the same but i'll have to force myself myself to use indices right so for i in range of n right so the so this is what this is uh, n is nothing but length of scores right so i'm looking at Eighth, eighth student in the list, and I am fixing that to be the lowest mark, right? Now for J, right? And no, no, the group starts from I, right? So let me write that down also. The group begins with student I. You all, you all, are you all okay with this? This group is going to start with student I. So for J in range of what? Until which point can I keep searching for the students, the rest of the students? I to length of uh, I to n. Okay, I to length of n. Oh, right, basically n, right? So the rest of the students start from the current student itself and go on. Now, if 
so what should be the condition for a student to begin uh, to belong to my group lj minus li okay. if the score if the score of the jth student minus the score of the ith student j has to be from Less beginning right sir it should be i plus 1 to n right ah uh, that is right it can it should I, ideally be from i plus 1 because you have already counted yourself but this is sir, uh, in a sense harmless should, right it should be from beginning right not from i right ah uh, no i am assuming that See, this is the assumption I'm making, right? Uh, students with the least you, you mark. Have to, when you go for the next uh, student, you want to see the next range. You should consider. You might be able to consider the previous one also, right? No, I'm making this okay. particular assumption, right? So yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right, right. So the student with the least mark, right? Group begins with I. Now, scores of J minus scores of I less than or equal to mark limit. Then, what can I do? i can increment the size of my group right i can i have added one more student to my group so i initialize size to 0 now uh now is it fine if i if it goes from i to n because the student i is also a part of the group right yeah yeah yes okay now uh so i'll stop here i'll just pause here is is have have i lost a lot of you or is there anyone who wants me to repeat what happened so far or are you still following this uh, sir this part sir, sir, sir. for j in basically this least mark calculation that you did okay right so see uh, let me take this example right 50 53 let me add few more mm -hmm. okay, 70 75 80 right you have these many students mm -hmm. in your class right and i am ask i am saying the following right mm -hmm. mark limit is 10 now you have to find out all valid groups right that is your task now yes. now look at it this way right the whatever group you have right whatever group you have will have a student with the least marks right yes okay now let's say that that student is 50 hmm and once you fix the student with the least mark in your valid group mm. what what do you think can be the marks of the remaining students they can only be the least mark yeah That's if you fix mark yeah if you fix the Then, student with the least mark what do you, what is the maximum mark that a student in your group can have within that mark limit yeah within mark limit 60 60 right anyone who has got beyond 60 will not fit the description of a valid group right so the moment you fix the student with the least mark in your group you automatically fix the size of the group hmm. okay so you have to all that remains is for you to uh, compute what this group size is the count the members yeah right so that's the basic idea so Uh, so we have to now look at all possible least marks right the least mark could be 50 it could be the student with 53 right that is why we use the first loop so the first loop is to fix the least mark candidate in the group the second loop is to actually you go go forward and compute the size of the group right so the, the let's say 53 is the student with the least mark Mm. start the next group from 53 itself right so 53 will certainly be a part of the group because uh, mark limit is some positive number typically right so scores of i minus scores of i will be zero so that student is certainly a part of the group you will keep going on until 63 right moment you reach 63 scores of j will be 63 scores of i will be 53 you will add that student also so it will be 1 2 3 4 after you process 63 the size of the group will be 4 the moment you come to 70 what will happen the mark limit will be exceeded right so 70 minus 53 will be what 17 right so the student the anyone from 70 cannot be a part of your group okay okay so what should you do in that case create a new group you have to continue on to 55 as the next student with the lowest mark right you have to basically get out of this loop 
is yeah. that right or do you need to get out of this loop or can you just let this loop run the loop you know loop run and uh, it it can run it can run right so let us let it run let us let it run and then there this is, is the size size somewhere right yeah. so this is the size of the group starting with student i so if this size is greater than some maximum size then update the maximum size right so maximum size we will have to like we do for any maximum calculation maximum size let's initialize it to 0 group size of 0 and then finally you can uh, return maximum size yeah, you have to update the maximum size so uh, your j and i what uh, means they are some integer values that we are used to it. Use for indexing, right? Ah, yes. That is just some index for the list scores, right? That's all. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, I let let's first verify if this is correct. I don't even know if this will uh, run without any error. So we'll have to make that zero out of two. We are printing it somewhere, right? So make sure that whenever you are printing things, I uh, have to delete what you are printing before submitting. Otherwise. You will end up getting some spurious output. So, we remove the print statement. Done this. No, it's correct. Okay, so fourteen, fourteen, twenty-two, twenty-two. Now, uh, let's go on and see. Okay, so that's five out of five have passed, right? So this is one of the correct solutions to this problem. any questions about the solution can you copy this code to the chat ah uh, yes yeah not whole one sir just half by half sir so the whole one doesn't get copied is it yes sir yes uh, okay this is uh, by the way like accepted practice right uh, because i i i don't know if i am allowed to do this yeah 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 you can do that okay so i have copied till ascending sort uh and then part and then the rest of it hey, any any questions regarding this problem If I have to break it with means into multiple functions and then use it to calculate this, how can I go about it? Ah, uh, you could do that. So, for example, we can, uh, as someone was pointing out, I don't remember who was pointing this out. We could break, we could turn this into a. But this could be a sort portion, right? So, for example, this would be, ah, uh, sorry, this would be a sorting procedure which does. accepts some list uh let's say l as input so l will it will take in and it will sort and return the sorted list right so it will return the sorted list so this is uh, whole sorting business now we can offload it and say that source equal to sort of l right so that is one function you can mm -hmm. right now the other the other function that you can write is getting the uh, max Yeah, maybe you can turn this into a. But I may not do that here. Maybe sort is the only thing I would do. Right. Mm -hmm. Got it, sir. Okay. Right. So, any other questions? If not, maybe we can go on to. We have one more. So maybe I'll do just one. OPP seven is similar to six, and I won't have time to complete it. But uh, OPP eight is uh, easier to do. Do you want to do this? So OPP nine is. Okay, OPP nine is. Do you want to do OPP nine and close? Yeah, we can do that. So OPP nine, maybe we'll do this, and then uh, tomorrow uh, you'll have one more session anyway. So 
Okay, so OPP 9, what it says is there are these five boxes. I think this is a theory question, right? You would have seen this question in, you must have seen this in theory also, one of the weeks. So there are five boxes and uh, you keep adding coins from left to right. Once you reach the last box, you head back to first box. Okay, find the box which has the maximum number of coins. Output put the smaller of the two box numbers. The sequence of coins is a string. So, so the coins are added. So there are five boxes. So the question is clear to everyone, right? I hope you have all read the question before. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Janice okay. Could not understand how to. Uh, uh, how to code this up, right? Uh, yes. yes, sir. Okay, so Some what is the string value? So list is easy to do, but string is very difficult. Okay, in fact, this is uh, you can just treat this as a. It's like just a list, right? In some sense, so I mean, it's not a list per se, but. Uh, let's maybe take this example itself. Uh, this is okay. That didn't get copied. So, sir. Yeah. Hello. Sir, last code uh, not executed. Uh, Runtime error coming. Okay, I might have the copied something data. incorrect. No, no. I think there's indentation error. Ah, okay, so okay. please adjust that. So you have to. It was working. OPP six was working. Actually. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, list uh, string, right? So what you can do is you could just treat this. You can just iterate through this string, right? So for, uh, I think the all this variable coins, right? Just accept this as input. And uh, for each coin, each coin in uh, coins, coins, right? So this is let's first uh, convert that into an integer because it will be a string, right? So let's convert that into an integer and use that. So what do you have to do? You have to put it into one of these boxes. Okay. So let's. I'll put it this way right coin one will have to go into box one coin two it's worth writing this down because that will show us a pattern mm -hmm. coin three will go into three coin four into four coin five into five and then coin six again one go back to one right so i'll bear with me i'll write this down for all the first 10 coins at least two so that the pattern is the pattern emerges. So this is C coin nine is four coin ten is right, right? So so that all of them are on the same line. So what what is now the pattern? Do you see the pattern here? Half repeats after five. Five, right? So it's a, it's a cyclical process, right? So now. The nice part is coin six. If you divide coins, if you divide the number six by five, the remainder that you get is one. one. If you divide the number seven by five, you get a remainder two. If you get if you divide nine by five, you get four. Uh, if you divide ten by five, you get zero, right? So five is again, you have to go back to zero. Mm. Right? So this has to know which box a coin has to go into. You have to do so. You have to do something with what operator in Python? Modulo. The modulo operator, right? So you have to do something with uh, the modulo operator. So instead of doing coin in coin, so have you all been introduced to this thing called enumerate in Python? Enumerate function. It was there in the fun uh, mod uh, list, but uh, I think uh, it, it is not. We never used it. it. Okay, so this is a useful thing. Uh, I mean, not not very useful, but uh, at least sometimes I find it useful. So let's say you have a list like this, right? Or, or let's let's use the coins example. Okay, right? so this is some sequence of coins. Now, for 
i comma coin in enumerate of coins work let me see if i run this uh, do you see what has happened yes sir it did indexing it the index and uh, the value the yeah so it, it, it prints the index of this character and also the corresponding mm -hmm. value right so sometimes if you don't want to use for i in length range of length of whatever you can instead use enumerate right so i'll use i'll use that enumerate here so enumerate uh point right so for i comma coin this particular the index of the coin and the actual coin in enumerate of coins and uh, now i am converting this into an integer right so i have this now how do i find out the box into which coin has to go using its index i how do i find the box let me call this box i, into which coin I what five i modulo 5 is equal to let's what this Hmm. Okay, let's see if this will work because see, let let's let's do the following right since indexing in python starts from zero, zero. it's uh, better to look at this right so start zero indexing the whole thing, right 10 coins it goes from zero ends at 9 okay now i modulo 5 is what it's not It's zero. not one, right? Zero, right? So it's let's right. move this also to zero to four, right? That makes life. How do you see what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So you can just do modulo phi index modulo phi, and you'll get the box into which this coin has to go into, right? So if you have a boxes list that has uh this is box 0 1 to begin with there are no coins okay now you know which box this coin has to go into right so add it to that particular coin right now what you have done is you have taken a string of coins and then you have found out which box contains how many coins is that was that fine whatever we have written so far Sir, this last part box of box plus equal to coin. So, how does it know? Ah, uh, which how does it know box meaning? That is a uh, box is the index, right? Boxes is a list, right? So boxes of zero will be the first first box. Hmm. This will be the second box, so on. Right? Box is the index of the box. So box zero. This is box one. You are numbering the boxes also from zero to five, uh, zero to four. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Right, so this is how i percentage five will give you which box the coin has to go into, and we are just updating the value there, right? Ah, yeah, we are just Actually, adding the coin to the I, box. I, the i will move from zero to nine, right? Ah, I will move from zero to nine, yeah, but i percentage five will move from zero to four. To four only. Okay. Yeah. assuming that you have understood this so far now you can just all that you need to do is find the what is that minimum maximum box right so so assume that the max box is max coins is uh, max coins is present in the zeroth box it's an assumption right so for box in boxes so what will box have box will have the number of coins right or if that variable confuses you let me just say for uh i in range of think of so in this case only five boxes so i'll just go ahead and write it so the number of coins in this box is what boxes of i right these are the number of coins in the ith box if you have more coins than max coins what should you do you have to update max coins as coins Finally, what do you need to find? You need to find the box which has the max coins, right? I'm going to call that max box. So you'll have to update max box to box number i. Uh, do you all agree that this is? So are we computing the maximum value? Ah, uh, you'll be computing the maximum value, but we have been asked to give the index. 
index right yeah so uh, the box number so the box number had, can be some value between 1 to 5 right so we have to print that so if i print max box you think the answer will be correct no so it has to be i plus 1 right, yeah you are right right it has to be max box plus 1 so this is the index right because we have done zero indexing we have to if you want the actual box number it has to be one more than whatever it is so let me first run it and see if it works before going back to the code okay so two out of two public test cases and seven out of seven private test cases right so this is the the idea behind uh, so you just iterate through the string as though it is a list right in this case uh, it will work okay any questions one if not do is we'll stop here and uh, so before i stop in this okay. code, could you copy the code to the chat please? yeah yeah so i'll just copy the ignore the comments i'll just copy the Part alone. All right. Okay. So thanks. Is there something be before that? That is just the, uh, the initial initial one. You yeah, just the in input, right? Accepting them. Input. So I hope input. you can do that. All right. So is that fine? Can I close the session now? Sir, can I get the coding of the documents, sir? For OPT. For which one? For uh, today's uh, solved all the things. I am not sure about that. I will ask Kram, uh, but uh, I am not like really sure about that. Okay, uh, everyone, thanks for joining. We can, I think, we'll have a session tomorrow. So please join that as well. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.